Hi there, welcome to this short presentation detailing my experience building the ICM 148th scale Polikopov PO2. As well as a kit build, this is also something of a tribute to a particular group of people who operated this craft, a group of people known to history as the Night Witches. The Polikopov U2 designated PO2 since 1944, was originally intended as a basic trainer and crop duster. Its fame was established during World War II though by a small number of aircraft operated by the 46th Taman Guard Night Bomber Aviation Regiment, better known to history as the Night Witches. This unit consisted entirely of women. It was the only instance of female aviators from any nation seeing frontline action during the war and its formation was almost entirely due to the efforts of one woman, Marina Raskova. This was my first ICM kit. Samples are easily available and cost about £15 now. Very reasonable for a kit in this scale. A few aftermarket products were sourced as well. Edouard do a pre-coloured set as well as a pre-cut masking set. Metallic Details, a new company to me, also do an etched brass set. There's a lot of overlap with the Edwards set, but it does include some useful extra bits as well. Buy both, they're not expensive. Construction started with the M11D engine, which doesn't appear till step 14 on the instructions, but I could see it was going to be a fiddle, so I thought I'd get it out of the way first. Plug leads, valve covers and con rods are all added from the etched brass metal sets. This was a task that could politely be described as challenging, but the final result is worth it. The assembly was painted, weathered and safely stored for later. I also sorted the bombs and the rear cockpit 7.62mm Chicasse machine gun. The bombs, probably 100kg but sources vary have replacement fins from etched metal, but the bomb halves themselves need attention as they are a poor fit and need some tricky filling before the metal parts are added. The machine gun had replacement front and rear sights and a new ammo box to replace the plastic one. The box took some careful folding but looked good when finished. The next couple of slides deal with the cockpit assembly. A lot of the brass bits featured here and Edouard's pre-coloured items were very impressive. They were easy to use, looked good and saved a lot of fiddly painting. Metallic details provide some detailed bits in this area that Edouard does not, but some of the moulded on sidewall detail has to be removed to fit them properly. Some of their items are worth using though. The fuselage halves assembled well with hardly any filling required. The fitting of the tail was a problem though. The fins moulded with the fuselage halves is not very firmly attached and had warped, requiring careful straightening out. ICM correctly portray the gap between the tailplane and the fuselage. However, the price for this is that the large tailplane and rudder assembly are held in place by only three small attachment points and are very easily knocked off as construction goes on. Better to leave the rudder and tailplane off, paint them separately and add them only during the final assembly sequence, I think. The lower wing was fitted next and the fit was excellent. Before being glued to the fuselage, four holes on each wing underside needed drilling to enable the bomb racks to be fitted later on. The instructions give clear measurements and said use a 0.8mm drill, although actually 1mm worked better and it was important to keep dry fitting the bomb racks as each pair of holes were drilled out to ensure they all lined up properly. The bomb racks were assembled and fitted. These were well moulded with convincing looking shackles and the undercarriage went on too. The wheels were left off and were masked and painted separately though being added after the main paint job was complete. The wing skids, part C8, were finely moulded but may have been better replaced with brass wire. When it comes to fitting the struts, a decision needs to be made. 
The instructions have the struts being fitted to the top wing first, then attached to the lower wing and fuselage. In this case, the opposite was done, and they were fitted to the lower wing first, leaving the top wing off. This was to make painting easier. For painting, the aforementioned Vallejo acrylic set proved most effective. The colours were underside blue, which is AMT7 greyish blue, AMT1 greyish brown, AMT4 camouflage green and NATO black, applied in that order. A priming coat of Halford's grey plastic primer was used as a base colour. Some tedious masking was required between the application of each colour, but the gyro cutter made the cutting of the wavy lines easy. I use harder and steam bet masking film, which I always find gives good results. Once any necessary touching up was done, an overall coat of well diluted Johnson's Clear was applied, sealing the paint and providing a suitably glossy surface for the decals. One of the four decal options provided in the kit was for a night witch's machine. It also happened with the most spectacular scheme, which was a rather happy coincidence. Decals were added before the top wing was attached, which was necessary as so many subjects had to be applied to the port side of the fuselage. The quality of the decals was very good. They responded well to the microsol microset system and there was very little problem with carrier film. The whole model was given a coat of Vallejo satin varnish number 522 after which the top wing was added to the main assembly using super glue, my preferred brand at the moment being Gorilla Gel for maximum strength. This potentially tricky task went almost surprisingly well and the remaining construction was quickly completed. The final major task is the rigging. No quick and easy method of doing this, but it's essential on a model of this size. There are several different methods of rigging now, aren't there? But the one used in this case was the most traditional. Good old stretch sprue, size to length with dividers, attached with super glue and tensioned with a hot, not lit, match head. A few strands were added at a time and the task spread over several days while work was done on other projects. A look at the underside shows the bombs and the racks as well as the good surface detailing on this kit. Wing and trailing edges were almost razor thin and the fit of parts consistently good. The rather lurid blue here is actually accurate I think if looking at restored museum examples of the PO2 or anything to go by. Sorry about the poor quality of this photo, but it makes such a change for me to build a model where the interior detailing can actually be seen, even if it is only in the rear cockpit. Very impressed with the Edouard detailing set. In conclusion, this ICM product is essentially a good kit. It's relatively inexpensive, cleanly moulded with well represented surface detail, well fitting parts and, apart from detailing the engine and adding the rigging, a generally straightforward build. The engine and cockpit areas certainly benefited from extra work and the aftermarket sets between them provided most of what was required. The range and quality of the decal sheet was another plus point. And so my little tribute to Marina Raskova and the Night Witches is complete. Let's hope their story is never forgotten. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.